Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Man, I am so super stoked. My turbo finally came in. And I say finally with emphasis because it arrived two weeks earlier than it was supposed to, but it still seems like it took a week longer than it should have. I'm just excited. So this is gonna be a strictly unboxing video because I don't think I've actually ever bought anything new. <laughs> so here is the first new car part that I've ever bought. Well, upgraded aftermarket fast part, you know. This is Max Speeding Rods GT3582. When you say China turbos, this is the China of China turbos. And I'm sure it'll be fine. I paid $229 Canadian for it, which in Bald Eagles is probably 180 bucks, but we don't get deals like you guys do. And I'm hoping it's gonna work. Obviously I'm not using one GT3582 because it's like a 62 millimeter or something. And all that would do is choke the six liter. So I'm gonna use two. So basically the reason that I have one right now is um, my YouTube channel, my little small baby channel with 5,000 subscribers, uh, I'll, I'll say 4,800, I can't go round and off, um, has been improving a little bit at a time. And last month I got paid $280 from YouTube. So it was enough to buy one turbo. So you guys, you guys are the 100% reason that I bought this. And next month when I get paid, which I have no idea how much it is yet because it's not next month yet. Um, I'm hoping that it'll still be that amount and I'll be able to buy the second turbo. So that's like super exciting. When I say I never thought my channel would get this big, as small as it is, I, I never thought for a second. I was like, come on, 100 subscribers, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's get this thing unboxed. I promise one of the next investments is going to be one of those little lapel mics so you, that you can actually hear me and there'll be no echoes. But here we go. So, Max Speeding Rods, GT3582. I haven't opened this yet. I got it like four hours ago and it's been absolutely killing me here at work waiting to take this thing out of the box. Got some gaskets. Looks like the it looks like maybe a T3 or a T4 inlet. And here's the four bolt round outlet. I actually got the flanges for these. And, oh, the package is really nice. Lots of foam there so it doesn't get damaged. It's gonna be impossible to take out. Yeah, here we go. All right, so make sure nothing else in the box. This is pretty. Yeah. I've never had a new turbo. Like, I've never had a turbo with a cat mount before. <laughs> this is super exciting. Man, this is packaged up like really nice. Wow. Look at the little baby turbo. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. So it looks like it's oil cooled and water cooled. So it looks like it's water cooled through here. And it'll go through the other side right here. So coolant will go through. And here is the oil in port. It looks like it does have a restrictor going in also because this is probably a 12 millimeter hole and down in here is where it actually goes through is a bit of eighth of an inch so i think that's the restrictor and here's the turbo drain which is actually a lot smaller than i expected it to be the turbo drains that i'm used to using have about a three quarter inch diameter hole here and this is maybe a little bigger than half inch maybe I don't know, maybe, well, probably 15 millimeter, maybe something like that. And here is the exhaust inlet flange. The outlet flange is here. 
it all looks really good actually the machining looks really nice on it nice and flat doesn't look like there's any damage or anything here now let's check the inlet everything looks really nice there looks like it was deburred and here we have our inlet wheel oh so cool wow doesn't seem to be any binding or anything there's a little tiny bit of movement this way if you can see it not very much but if that becomes an issue I will keep an eye on it it's a little bit less than an eighth of an inch but if it starts to smoke I'll definitely record that here is the exhaust outlet looks really good doesn't seem to be any markings on the case where it would have been dropped or anything like that here we have boost reference for the wastegates and potentially to blow off valves but I think I'll use it for wastegates and that's going to give an accurate reading right here out to the top of the gate because your most accurate boost reading is going to be right here in the compressor housing. The boost drops off when it goes out into the intercooler and in the intake. So I'll probably use that for the top of the gates. Now, because this was a super, super, super cheap turbo, I'm pretty sure the quality control is probably not as high as a True North turbo or a Precision or Borg or something like that. So I'm going to pull it apart. Let's grab a couple of wrenches and we'll have this in pieces in no time. So I've got it nipped in the vise here so that it doesn't go flopping around on me or fall down. Bolts are, they seem to be torqued anyway. I already cracked one just to make sure how tight they were, but they're all relatively the same tightness. It's always a good thing to look for. You don't want bolts to be, some of them be super tight and some of them not tight at all. Yeah, try not to drop them in it. Come away all this to one side. So this is like a bolt and flange style, which this flange on the back nips the compressor housing to the turbo housing. And then after you get them all loosened, you can rotate the housing and tighten out all the bolts again. It's not a terrible setup. It's, it's not as quick a setup as like the V-band style that my other turbo uses. The Mac turbo uses a V-band style and it's great. You just undo one 716 bolt and rotate it and tighten it back up. But this should be fairly good. So here is the compressor housing completely taken off. It's actually in nice shape. It's not bad at all. There's a little bit of marks here. So it looks like it may have been I don't know about banging around, but maybe, maybe hanging around in a warehouse for a little bit. But I kind of do like this. That's pretty sweet. I just drilled the whole way through also. And now I'll take off the turbine housing. One thing, one reason I don't like the bolt style is because the oil ports, the inlet and outlet oil ports usually always get in the way of the bolts. And in this case, it seems like it is too. You always end up stripping out the bolts or something like that. But that's it. All right, I put it on a better angle. So I'm just gonna take out all these bolts. I'm just gonna strip this thing down completely because I wanna give an honest review of what this thing looks like. Just a 10 second backstory while I'm here. Max Speeding Rods contacted me in June or July of last year, 21, and said, hey, we like your channel and your TikTok and all that stuff. My wife posts on TikTok. And they said, we want to sponsor you. And we couldn't, not that we couldn't come to an agreement, but they never had the parts in the warehouse that, I, that, that they wanted to sponsor me for because I was, I'm in Canada. 
and I guess that can be a bit of an issue when it comes to shipping and stuff. So they wanted to, we were trying to work on getting a GT45 turbo first. And then I said, well, what about twin GT3582s? And I could like buy one or even a small discount or something like that. And we were working on it for months up until two weeks ago, I messaged them and said, hey, uh, has there been any news on anything? Uh, I'm getting ready that I'm gonna need turbos, so I'd like to see if we can work something out. And they messaged me back and said, hey, no, sorry, we're not doing it anymore. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll buy your turbos. <laughs> so this is a non-sponsored review. Um, so now I've got all the bolts out and the clamp is out. I just gotta kind of work at this one to get the compressor housing or uh, the turbine housing off of the turbo body itself. So first impressions, I really like it. It's a nice looking turbo. Um, it's a little bit on the smaller side. I'm hoping that it's gonna be fine for this six liter, but my engine isn't actually six liters displacement. It's actually a six liter block and pistons with a 4.8 crankshaft and rods. So it's a D-stroked six liter, which comes out to about 5.4 liters. It's not gonna make a lot of torque down low, but it's gonna make power up high in the RPM. So I'll be revving it up around 7,500 or 8,000 or something like that, depending on what my transmission can handle. And it's got a sloppy stage three cam in it with Pac-12 18 springs. So it's gonna move a lot of air and I'm, I will report on how this thing works out. As for after taking it apart, it seems okay. There's no real rust or anything. There's no real heavy damage. There are some scratches and stuff inside of here, but I don't think it's gonna cause me too much in the way of issues. The machining in here looks good. For the center housing, the threaded parts in here look good. The threaded openings for the coolant are different than what I'm used to seeing. I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of an adapter for that. The drain looks like it's fine. Inside of here doesn't look like there's any damage. I'm not gonna pull this apart because this has to have specific torque on it. I'm not quite sure what it is. The compressor wheel looks good. There's no damage on here. It seems like it has the marks that say, hey, yep, this was checked and torqued. This was checked. They have all the QC marks on it. And it is clean. There's lots and lots of packing oil on it. Like you can see the glisten on my hands and I've washed my hands probably three times since I opened this up. And everything in here looks really good. I think these drilled holes, machined holes, could have been cleaner. You can see that it was like a half blunt, dirty, undersized drill bit went in there and you went and drilled 25 holes in it. But I'm not, overly concerned about that. I might clean it up if I feel like I should, but I am also going to paint it the same color green as that engine. So, you know, a little bit of paint is going to go a long way with this. All the hardware looks good. I don't know if this is stainless or just some sort of coating, but it does have that shine to it. Although I suspect it's just some sort of coating on it. And uh, these look like maybe aluminized brackets. I don't think they're going to rust too fast. The only thing that I'm really not a huge fan of is how much, I think it's radial play that there is here. I can take this shaft and move it this way in the bushings, which every turbo that I've ever had does that. Not really a lot, but just enough where you can wiggle it. And I assume, this is just me assuming, that it has to have some, sp some space in there and some play so that when everything heats up and expands, that it takes up that space and then there's a tight uh, turbo shaft to bearing tolerance, and then it'll just basically tighten up and the film of oil will protect everything. But if that isn't the case, then it's probably gonna burn oil because there's enough space between the shaft and the journal bearing that oil will get outside the compressor housing and uh, burn oil that way, or it'll leak oil into the exhaust, which I'm not a fan of. I've had it happen and it's no fun at all. So I, I think I'm gonna contact the seller which is max speeding rods, and just give them a heads up and say, hey, I've got some radio play, just took it out of the box, what do I do? And let them 
see how they see fit to deal with it. And now on to gaskets and flanges. So here are the two flanges. This is the exhaust outlet flange. You can see it's gonna go right here. The exhaust inlet flange, which is gonna go on the bottom of the turbo there. And I didn't buy these from this seller or from eBay. These are Vibrant Performance. I work at CarQuest, so we buy parts from eKeystone. And I got the part number off eBay or Amazon and then typed it into Keystone and just ordered them in. Now, I don't have these paid for yet, so I'm not going to take them out of the packages. So I'm going to put them back on the shelf. I just wanted to see how the quality of the gaskets were in comparison to these flanges. So here's the inlet gasket that came with the turbo. And I just want to check the diameter of it. And it seems fine. I might trim it a little bit just to make sure that this isn't going to cause a shrouding issue or anything because it looks like it might be about an eighth of an inch off maybe. So the edge is right here. And I'll put it up and I'll move it over until the next edge. There's definitely an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths, something like that. So I'll probably run a... Uh, die grinder in around here and open this up a little bit. As for the outlet flange, it actually doesn't look bad at all. I think it's gonna be around the same diameter. So that's fine. And these are steel gaskets. I'm definitely gonna use some ultra copper sealer on these. I'm pretty sure they're probably reusable. So part numbers for the outlet flange is 14380. For the inlet flange is 14310, and it looks like it is a T3 flange by the look of this. Well, as far as I can tell, our unboxing video is unboxed and all done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one together in a second. I'm just gonna go over it and inspect it a little bit more just to be sure. I'll send a video of the uh, shaft play to the seller, see what they think. And I thank you again for coming and checking out the video. And thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, uh, a whole lot of new subscribers. As of right now, uh, just past 4,800 today. And for anybody who watches my regular videos, this one's probably going to mess up the order of things. And in the next video, I might be like, oh, I think I might order a turbo. But I wanted to get this out like as soon as I got it because I'm super, super excited. Um, so thanks again. And if anybody would like to check out my Patreon, it is patreon.com slash stationroadratrods. That's a small way to help out the channel a little bit and, well, help fund awesome stuff like this. Thanks again. Have a great night, everybody.